All right, let's talk about two problems that GraphQL solves before we start actually implementing GraphQL. And this is why I like it so much. There are two things. One thing is called overfetching and one thing is called underfetching, all right? So for example, let's say that you want to, I don't know, you want to get um, a list. No, you want to display a list of all the usernames on your website. So you will do something like this, users, right? This will be a get. Cool. But um, you, that users thing is not going to give you only the username, right? It's going to give you the username, the last name, the profile photo, all that stuff of all the users. Cool? Because maybe later you need it for a bigger list. So on this bigger list, you're going to show the profile photo, the name, and the email. But on the first list, you only want to show the username. But anyways, you have to call this URL twice. And you have to call this URL, and this URL will send you a big fucking package with Username, last name, email, gender, blah, 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 blah. That's not efficient in the way that you are asking for the database. Sorry, you're asking to the database um, for fields that you're not going to use, right? So if you send a GET request to users, you're not going to use the profile photo, the first name, the last name, the email. All you want in your first list is the username, okay? But you have a so much that you're not gonna use. And this uh, makes your database look for those fields, and this makes the connection of your customer get all this information that you're not gonna use on your application. So this is called overfetching. This means you get more information from the server than the information you asked for. And this is not very efficient. And also, developers don't know what they're getting. They need to see their request, and they're like, all right, I get all this object, Maybe they console log the request, right? And they say, oh, I get all this, ob all this object, I only need the username. The rest goes to shit because you don't use it. That is overfetching. Sorry, all right, that's overfetching. And overfetching, man, you could live without it, right? And also, it's nice to give the developer control of what information does he want. Like, we should be able, as frontend, to ask the database only for the username. That's what we want. That's what we want to get. We want to get an object with only the username. So this is one thing that we have to, um, that uh, GraphQL fixes, overfetching. Now, underfetching is, um, underfetching is when you have to make a lot of requests to accomplish one thing, right? So for example, I remember on the Instagram clone that we did, uh, let's say the app starts, right? The app starts and you want to get many things. You want to get the feed of the Instagram page. You also want to get the notifications, right? And you also want to get the user profile, all right? This is three requests just to initialize the application, all right? That is three requests that are coming, uh, going and coming three times to initialize your application. This is called over uh, under fetching, all right? This means that uh, on REST, you need to call many sources sometimes to accomplish one thing. And this is something that GraphQL also fixes for you. You don't have to overfetch and you don't have to underfetch. You can actually describe all the information that you want on one query. And this, you will ask me, but wait one second, man. How can I describe all the information? How can, for example, I get all this right in one url and this is the first point that you need to change your mind about with graphql there are no urls whatsoever okay there is no url system there is no feed slash notifications slash users that doesn't exist on graphql okay there's just only one endpoint we're going to call this endpoint you're going to call it api you can call it graphql there's many whatever you want to call it but it's only one endpoint right so imagine this because maybe you don't, I mean, not maybe, but you don't know this yet. But for example, if I wanted to accomplish all this in GraphQL, I can just create one query. First definition of the day, query. Query means ask something from the database, right? I can just create one query and I can describe with a GraphQL language, I can describe what information do I want. So for example, I can say something like this. I want the feed and for every photo of the feed, I only want the comments and the like number and also i want uh the notifications 
and I want to know if it's red. Is red, all right? And also, I want to get the user profile, and I want to get the username, and I want to get the profile pic. This is something called a query. And you will send this to the backend of GraphQL, to your GraphQL backend, and this will give you an object with the answer like that. It will say feed, and it will be an array, I guess. That will be JavaScript object. This is GraphQL language. This is JavaScript, all right? It will be feed, I don't know, and you could have a comments one, like number 20, and this will repeat itself, and notifications as well. So you're gonna have notifications, that will be an array because there are many, and you're gonna have is read true, uh, is read false. For example, you only have two notifications, and for the user, you're gonna have the user, and you're gonna say, this is a username, is uh, Nico, and profile pic, and some URL. Right, that'll be it. So this will be what you will send to GraphQL, and this will be what GraphQL will give you, a JavaScript object with exactly what you ask for, all right? And this is amazing, this is awesome, okay? Because you can ask for information, you're gonna get only what you ask for, and you can format it in the way that you want to. The API doesn't just change your shit, and then you have to format it, or you have to mix it, or you have to change the shape, no. It's just there, all right? That is awesome. So we learn on this video because it's super long. I'm sorry, translators. On this video, we learn not if uh, the law. We learn queries. This is a query. We learn underfetching and overfetching and how GraphQL solve these issues. See you on the next video. Bye bye.